The Rick Short Band has always been blessed with excellent artists, musicians. I'm proud of every one of them and I've learned a lot from each one of them. This particular lineup is no different. It's a unique set of talent. What we all do together brings a new level of energy and creativity to the Rick Short Band project. I spent a lot of years really dialing in my sound, you know, trying to get that classic rock vibe, but for a modern uh, song. And uh, after several years, I, I thought I had it just the way I wanted it. Then Eddie and Zach and Brian and Kalender showed up and just made it even better and just blew my mind. I just love the way this band is sounding right now. Well, I started playing guitar when I was about 12 years old. Of course, not seriously, and then a little more seriously but when I was in high school. And I played throughout my life. I never really got very good at it. I didn't work hard enough at it. I didn't study hard enough at it. The classic problems that we all seem to have. At about 2010, I decided to get very serious about songwriting and capturing that classic vibe feel, but in original songs. So this project really started in 2010 with the songwriting and then eventually a, a year or so later with uh, band formation and then uh, performances and then recording. And here we are today, working on our second CD. When you get to create your own parts and it's really something magic. And uh, it's just, you put your heart and soul into your parts and then we all help each other with uh, trying to get some of that uh, locked in and you're not playing someone else's part or trying to be someone else, you're being you. Okay, here we go. Well, I'm the grandfather of the <laughs> <laughs> I'm a senior citizen of the <laughs> It keeps getting better all the time, as you can see. It's really, really evolved, especially for Rick. He, he's really evolved in the past four years that I've known him. He's a great guy, most of the time. We all have our input. You know, we all like come up with these different ideas or, you know, sounds and just a lot of times it's hard not to make the next song sound like the last one. So that's our job. Uh, Rick's got great lyrics and, and uh, it does have that old classic rock and roll feel at the same time. But girl, it's gone to your head It ain't right what you're doing It ain't right, baby, what you done Something bad, something bad was brewing It's the end You're gonna miss me in the morning His uh, songs or stories, a lot of them are kind of demented. Once you, once you start, <laughs> once you start reading into them, like you get, a, you get a good set of lyrics. Uh, like it's a story, like you hear it and like you're going with the groove, and then like and you just start listening to it and you're like, oh, that's that's very eerie, very dark.
came up with that guitar part in my car, and then uh, on the way to work. That's how I work. You know, I was driving to work. Oh, yeah. yeah, I could do that. What I try to do, a big part of what I do is I try to figure out what the characters in the songs are and try to figure out how I'll make those characters come alive through my guitar, um, through some kind of sound or riff or whatever. So I kind of paint a picture, like an atmosphere, oh, yeah, that's what I really do. Sort of set a background, kind of, I think like Riders on the Storm, like the stuff in the background there. But what about me? It's this, this guy that he varies between a, a he's dreaming about this this woman he really likes and then he realizes he can't have her so he goes from like dreamy to frustrated so I, I sort of try to change my guitar tone at different times during the song to, to make both of those elements come out and contrast it and that's really the fun for me and Rick really lets us add a lot and we can pretty, pretty much take his skeleton and really manipulate it into something big and that's what I like. Ed does a lot of the stuff with the vocals. Um, I'll make up riffs or maybe even other sections of songs sometimes. And I dream up in my car and then bring them in, try to figure them out. Oh, and this, this like, play one note, you get two. Mm. It's a cool. Steve Van Halen trick. I don't do it quite like him, but tell me when tapes are on, I'll roll it. I've been with Rick since uh, May of 2014. Um, I was invited by a friend of ours. He suggested me to uh, to Rick, and we've been playing about every week since. Rick, since he wrote the songs, he has this vision of what he wants. Eddie's got this singing background with the percussion and the, the drums and the bass. That's a good uh, formula we got there. And then Brian just has so much experience with music he studied it for a long time and he he kind of gets kind of gets the more nitty-gritty parts down which is uh what we like so as a unit we work very well and then Kalendra is a sweetheart and she's singing her heart out too and she's kind of added that last element that we needed That's a lot of work. You hear. You're hearing. Mm. 
your hair and everything different now. It's not like you're playing on a, at practice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the sound, the ambience, like it's all different. Look mm-hmm. at me, man. I I've got myself like turned down to like zero. I'm not. I'm just listening to the room. Well, I have that for Eddie because it's just it's distracting. <laughs> no, seriously, like I can hear him so well that yeah. when I have him up, it's distracting. Yeah, I'm just listening to the room because uh, it's a nice room. My amp is pretty loud. I I went louder than what I like to. But. Zach and I joined in May, last May. Uh, we both showed up. He, Rick had another guitar player, and he was looking for a backup, a bass player and a backup, because Zach was going to the Lady Gaga show. He would have been there totally too, but but uh, as it was, he stole my ticket. So <laughs> anyway, so I had to play bass on the first gig, and uh, uh, they wound up moving me over to guitar. And I had to learn all the guitar parts in a matter of like two weeks and then be ready for the bo- even less than two weeks. Just yeah. start playing the Boilermaker and then I just kind of like evolved them little by little. They got better every show and then uh, we took a big break after the summer. But it was funny like we would take turns practicing bass and the other guy would play guitar. And we'd steal each other's uh, ideas. Yeah, be like Brian would be like, oh I never thought of that. And I would start fucking on it and then I would do something. Brian's like, oh that's cool. We just, it was really cool how some of the bass parts evolved. Well, Zach is the youngest member of this band. And uh, so it, before Calendra got there, it was mostly uh, Rick and Ed and myself and Zach at the rehearsals. And uh, these two would gang up on my little brother over here, <laughs> Rick and, and Zach, and I would defend them all the time. No, man, I like what you're doing, man. So, yeah. Eddie and Rick are bullies when it comes yeah. to, uh, comes to uh, <laughs> limiting, limiting my creativity. <laughs> then we get in the show, and Zach will do something, and, and we're. Zach will do something funny over here, and I'll just look at what was that, man? And I don't know, I can't get away with that in the rehearsal, so I may as well do it here. No, you, you, you get away with a lot more stuff live. I take a, sometimes I'll take a risk and see how it works out. Uh, most of the time it doesn't. <laughs> no, no, no. It was fun as playing live. Oh, yeah. Sounding a lot loose, you know, a lot loose, do whatever we want to do. We did this show at the uh, the state fair. It was all of us, and like it was just incredible, just being in front of these people, and it was a great sounding stage, and everyone just clicked, and we just had this really good time, and uh, it was just we just played everything, everything we had, and it was just it was just a magical moment for at least me and the band. So still dialing in and everything, so uh, I have to listen to it and if like if I feel like we could do it better then I think we can. Like at least I feel like I can. Said, yes. Some bands come and they do like one song, three songs a day. Oh yeah. We, we know what we're doing. We're not perfect. Nobody's perfect. Nobody's perfect. Eight and a half hours is pretty amazing. You know, really. And and with the, the overdubs that we were we're putting in right now, you know, so like I said, there's a big hunk of clay, we gotta just start chopping it down and figuring what's working, what's not working, and then take the old Ginsu knife to it. Yeah. We feel very fortunate to have Subcat Studios here in Central New York. Um, what we're looking for is not just a perfect studio, there are a few of those, but what we're looking for is the combination of a really excellent studio with great equipment and with a group of individuals as engineers and support people who are very friendly, who are supportive, encouraging, experienced, and can kind of act as a, as a member of the band in a sense. And that's what we found here. Subcat was very strongly advised to us by people who were really in the know. Uh, I came here and watched a couple sessions and I thought that it was amazing. I was very impressed. Uh, met Ron Keck and uh, John. They're two really nice guys who have really uh, encouraged us and uh, been a friend throughout the entire multi-year process that we've been coming here.
he's one of the most generous guys I ever met, and he's always encouraging you, and he's always, like, I get a text after every practice saying, oh, you did good, you did good, and it, it makes me feel uh, really good about working with him. I feel very fortunate to have these uh, people as bandmates. They're all uh, incredible musicians, but they're also really nice friends. They're good people. Um, they've got a lot of experience and a lot of passion. They're uh, very caring about the craft, as well as the art of original music. I really like that about them. Um, they, they have a soft spot in their heart for original music, which is what I'm all about. So when you combine that with their innate passion and with their incredible talent and the friendship, it's just a wonderful group of people to have as a band. Writing music and being a part of a creative process is, uh, is a lot of fun and it's something that I want to continue doing. Well, as a child of the 60s and 70s, uh, I am that music. I, I'm made from that music. It's what's inside of me. So, of course, that's what my original music sounds like and feels like when it comes out. And that's what I'm trying to capture. We've all heard Taking It to the Streets a thousand times, and it's a wonderful song, and it's, it's fantastic. But as a person who loves classic rock music, I was hoping to keep that vibe, but yet have something fresh and new. So instead of listening to oldies, I wanted to listen to newies. There aren't any, so um, I had to go out and make some. And that's what I'm trying to do with the Rick Short Band Project. I'm trying to write songs that feel like classic rock, that have the roots and the vibe and, and the, the sounds, the chord progressions, but yet have the songs be brand new so that it's something interesting to listen to. When he wrote everything down, he has a vision of what to do. I mean, I can't just like do, just play no like these like, Yeah, no Seinfeld <laughs> stuff in there. <laughs> it just kind of keep it in his vision with the freedom of doing some of the fills and some of the transitions that I want to do and uh... No grateful death for me. He's, he has a loose vision and he wants us to put our spin on it to uh... make it the band and not just Rick Short. When I write a song, the, the inspiration comes from, from several different places. Uh, sometimes it's, it's an interesting chord that I've discovered or a chord progression that I've heard and then I start playing with it and then that'll lead me to a feeling or an emotion and once I get that, I start thinking of who's got that feeling and who's got that emotion and um, what are they saying and what's, what's on their mind and it flows from there. Other times it starts from a sentence or a phrase. I'll hear something that my wife says or a friend of mine says or I hear something on the radio that somebody's talking about and I'll say, wow, that's an intriguing concept or that, just the way those two words or four words went together, it's kind of melodic. Uh, poetic and, and it just gets me going and uh, next thing I know I've got a, a chorus or a, a verse and then I work at it from there. First things that happen, whether it's a chord progression or, or um, a chorus or a verse, a lot of times they come easy, that first 20% of a song, but it's really hard to finish it. It's really hard to develop the continuity and the consistency, the structure, the format, the, the rhyming pattern, the, the, the cadence and tempo. And Usually the ideas are, are almost a dime a dozen, especially in classic rock. What is it? You know, it's sex and rock and roll and party and cars and stuff like that. But uh, to get it to fit together intelligently or, or really coherently is, is work. I listen to a lot of music and some of these old songs I hear, they're, they're almost about nothing and they don't really make sense. If you were to write them on paper, it's kind of nonsensical. I don't want to write a song like that. I, I want to write a song that really has a message and that's intelligently put. And so that's why the, the finishing up of it is, is hard work. And I enjoy that. I enjoy that, you know? Do what you love to do and you'll never work a day in your life.
love these songs, and I love what we've done together. I think it's great, man. I think this is going to be a smoking record. Yeah.